put her down. Her name's Magenta. You can talk to her. Back legs nice and gentle there, Mick. You're a big bloke. Yep. Tip. See these legs here? Yep. This is no good. We want them in the swimming position. Just gently back like that. Yep. It's all about being very, very gentle. Mm -hmm. Other leg okay there, mate? Yeah, mate. How about the back legs there, Mick? Give us a look. Good, good, good. Tail. Got it under control, sweetheart? Yep. Righto. So, um, now Dr. Mark is going to perform um, his surgery, so he now becomes the team leader, whatever he wants you do. I'm just going to come in and use some local anaesthetic to numb the area I'm going to do some work on. So, if you'll hear me say, needle on sheath. That's it, you've got to hang on and listen to Dr. Mark. All right, now, the next scale is one up in here. Please, please, please remember that this is the quietest crocodile we've caught thus far. Very, very quiet. Um, her name is Magenta. You can pat her, you can sook on her, you can talk to her. Um, you know, she's a, an absolutely magnificent and beautiful crocodile and, and we should fully appreciate that. And what is happening right now will actually be quite life-changing for her. When you're working with animals, if you introduce a hey, new Mark. sound... She's got a talent. Oh, a really significant animal, Steve, because that's a really old tag. It's so old, I can barely read it. Crikey, this is a real bonus for our croc research. QNPWS, Queensland National Parks and Wildlife Service. The number is... Oh, mate. That's an old tag. I'll leave it up to you, my friend. Two one five. Look at that. Lovely work. Thanks. That means we don't have to scoop mark it, Sam. Oh, that's nice. Two one five. It was really amazing for one of the captures that Steve actually found an old crocodile tag on one of the animals that we captured on um, Seven Mile Waterhole. It was an old tag, it probably has a 15, 20 year history, so at this stage we're looking at going back through the records to try and find out where that animal came from, how old it is and how big it was when it was first captured. So it's just amazing to get that sort of spatial and temporal information on a research animal. Do you want me to take the towel while you watch what Dr. Mark's going to do? All right, I'll take over. I got it. You're welcome. I don't go up there next to Joy, but Crocodiles live in a secret world, so radio tracking will give us vital information on their unknown movements. Can you hold on that for me, Bing? That's the radio transmitter. Hold her, hold her. Righto. Can you go forward a bit, Joe? Next, next hole going in. It's all done, thank you. That's the hole. Tracking will also reveal the size of home territories. Take the magnet off and turn it on. And show which crocs share the same space. So I'm just using plastic coated braided stainless steel wire here. Watch the way Mark wires this on, babe. Yep. Yep, because after lunch we're going to put one on you. <laughs> it's really not that difficult. Oh, no, I'm thinking if she kind of flexes backwards, we ought to go through the uh, shoulder blades. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, kid, you would never do that. I wouldn't, would I? You're my daughter. As well as helping to catch and release crocs for radio and satellite tracking, Australia Zoo is financing a DNA survey of the Lakefield crocs to identify who's related to who. So Mark is snipping a small fragment off the tail. And before she's freed, we record all the vital stats. Okay, the total length of this animal is 288.5. About nine and a half feet. Now, grab it, Keish, stick your weight into it. All 20 kilos of it. All right. It's actually a little bit surreal, but unbelievable. Uh, to be involved in something as awesome as this is amazing, and to be taught by the best in the world is is very, very special. Yeah, amazing. All right, now, um, what I'm going to tell Paul's been here for um, quite a lengthy period now. 
Um, so he's about to become the team leader for this release. So the team leader is now going to be Paul. I'm going to leave Trevi on the front jewel ropes on both of them. Rhino, I want you on the other side so we can stagger either side of the prop. And I'll jump in in front of Tiffany, so I need you behind Tiffany on that side. Um, didn't feel scared at all as far as Steve um, telling me how to jump on the croc and everything. My hesitation wasn't from fear of the crocodile. I actually thought he was explaining what to do to all of us and then tell us when to go. So I guess I was just, yeah, should have listened a bit harder maybe. Um, that made me feel... I didn't feel like crying for once, so that was pretty good. I actually got more emotional towards the end of um, being on top of that crocodile and just feeling like the passion that uh, Steve telling us all about, um, why it's so important uh, that we, we are doing what we're doing, um, putting the, the little radios on the crocodiles. Okay folks, on three we lift. Get a good grip. Not too hard on the feet. One, two, three. Up. Magenta's been so quiet so far. Good for novices handling their first wild crop, but we're about to find out she's still got a lot of bite and a stack of speed. Excuse me, Paul, um, when you get her all secured before the release, Bindi has a very important piece of information you'd like to share. Watch the feet. Releasing time is one of the most dangerous parts of the operation. It's the only time everyone's close when she's not restrained. Come over here and make your announcement. Just because you guys know, um, a, cro a croc strikes from the tail all the way up to the legs to the mouth. Thanks, Bindi. Thank you very much, sweetheart. Over this way now, we've got to make safe for Paul. When I've got Bindi away from the firing line, Mark's teaching the best way to cut the binding around the jaw. Ropes first, then the tape. And just before the final layer of tape's cut, a couple of strong rubber bands go right around both jaws. This will hold the jaws shut long enough to get out of her way in the critical seconds when everyone gets off. It was really interesting to teach the guys from Australia Zoo the rubber band technique for releasing crocodiles. It's a technique that I learned from Colympus and he developed it in about 1975. So it's really neat to be able to take a technique like that that I learned many years ago and pass it on to people so they'll learn it and they'll use it now for safe releases of crocodiles. Four, three, two, one. Crikey, that was close. Yes. Struck back at you nicely, yes, you mate. Were. You know, your life was in the hands of that rubber band. You can see just how close a shave that really was, and how the rubber bands had a vital margin of safety. To be team leader, it changes everything. For, it's easy to follow someone when you've got confidence in them and you've got confidence in their ability. All of a sudden the shoe's on the other foot and everyone's looking at you and they're expecting you to be confident as well. So to step up and to actually trust that you're able to do it and have faith in the people around you, um, it's different. It's very different. It's more challenging and certainly more nerve-wracking. I had butterflies in my, in my tummy definitely, but I had confidence in the people around me and I had confidence in my ability, also the fact that Steve had confidence in me having watched me for a little while do what I was doing and then say, right, you're ready, you'd go and do it. That's that's a boost. So yeah, it was I was I was nervous um, and exhilarated all at the same time with it and I was just I'm glad that it all went well, but I was pumped, definitely pumped. It's early morning in Lakefield National Park and time to check out the traps we baited and set the night before. And another soft mesh trap has worked a real treat. We got one. Woo! Here we go. Woo -hoo! Only a little bloke. But my goodness, he's cranky at being caught. And even worse when he sees Steve and the croc school moving in. Oh, wow. How's this little tacker? Absolutely beautiful. Just drag him back up here a bit. 